Hello everyone, welcome to a new lab video for software design. Um, I'm Steph and today we'll be talking about the chain of responsibility design pattern. So the design context for um, this lab is we have a company which has a tech support um, and in different kinds of issues go to different teams. Um, so uh, database related issues go to the database team, network related issues go to the network team, etc. And what we want to do is we want to be, able to be able to easily create issues that are then automatically sent to the right department. So we don't want to have to choose ourselves which department um, each issue goes to, but that should be done in the background. We also um, want to be able to easily add new departments or remove departments that were already there. And we want to be able to easily change which departments uh, different issues go to. So here you can see the uh, UML diagram for um, our specific scenario. So as you can see, we have an abstract issue handler class, which um, can handle different kinds of issues. And in our example, we have three different teams. So we have the networking team and database team, as I just mentioned. We also have the application team. And the application team basically oversees all of the issues that come in. So every kind of issue goes to um, the application team as well. Then we also have the uh, issuer, which issues, issues. Um, um, and um, this issuer should not be concerned with which team um, each issue goes. Um, so it should just be able to call um, uh, one, uh, one time, it should be able to call the handle issue, and then that issue should automatically go to each um, team. All right, so now that we have seen the uh, UML uh, diagram for this, let's go over to IntelliJ and implement this into our code. All right, here we are in IntelliJ. So as you can see, I've already set up the basic skeleton that we saw in the UML diagram. So we have the application team, the database team, and the networking team. Um, we also have a couple issue types. So we have question, network, database, and other, uh, which will be handled by the different teams. Um, but we haven't implemented the chain of responsibility uh, design pattern yet. So as we can see, um, if we now want to handle an issue without this design pattern, what we have to do is we have to go through each team and then call handle issue in each one um, to send this issue to each team. Um, now, as you can see, this creates a lot of uh, code. And if we uh, were to add new teams, we would also have to add new code for every page where we um, create an issue. So that's not ideal. However, this code does work. So as we can see um, when I run this, we can see that the application team and the database team both get this unable to connect to database issue. The application team and the networking team get this no internet connection issue. And then the application team gets this application error when starting. Um, so now let's implement the chain of responsibility design pattern in this code, and we can, we'll see how this will improve our code. So I will first get rid of this over here. So what we want to work towards is we want to have a global issue handler, which I will be creating here. It consists of all of the teams. So I start with the application team, and I add the networking team next. And then I add the database team next. So as you can see, we now have um, a global issue handler with these three teams. And then what I want to be able to do is I want to say on this global issue handler, I want to handle um, this kind of issue. So I'll just be using the same issues as uh, before. So we have the database issue, we have the networking issue, and we also have this. Uh, application error and starting issue. So this is what we want to be able to do. So the behavior has to stay the same. However, now I only have to call handle issue once for each type of issue, and it will automatically be distributed across the teams. All right, let's look how we um, want to implement this. So we first want to implement this at next construction, so we can chain teams together like this. We go over to our issue handler. What we basically want is a linked list of these issue handlers. 
as you can see, I already have created a next team uh, field in this issue handler. And that is uh, one that is uh, a field that will point to the next team. So the next team that should handle an incoming issue. So in order to add, um, to add this, I'm just going to say in this next method, next team equals handler. So this handler, so this other team that we want to add, will be set to this next team. Um, and that way um, we create this chain of different teams that will handle uh, issues. We also have this return this in here. This just returns the same issue handler. This just allows us to um, do this in one line as over here, instead of um, having to do this across multiple lines. So this just saves us a, bunch of, uh, a little bit of code um, when writing this global issue handler. Now we still need to handle this issue because as it currently stands, an, uh, a single team will handle its issue, but will not pass it to the next team. So if you look at the teams, we see that this, they have the super that handle issue uh, line that I've put at the bottom of um, their uh, code. So what this basically does is it will call the handle issue that is defined in the issue handler. Um, and each team has this. So the application team, the database team, and the networking team all have the same uh, line of code in here. And we do that um, so we can handle, uh, so we can pass this issue on to the next team in one place. So over in here in this issue handler. So in order to pass this issue to the next team, what we'll do is we'll take the next team and then we tell uh, that team that they should handle this issue with the same type and the same uh, issue name. So what this will do is uh, um, we start, for example, at the application team, they will handle the issue and they will call this code. And then the next team, which is uh, maybe the database team, will then also start to handle this issue. And the database team in of itself will also call their next team, which then is the networking team, which will also handle this code. The only thing we need to do is um, once we are lost in the list, so we have reached the final team, um, then there won't be a next team. Um, so as it currently stands, this will throw an exception uh, when that happens. So to prevent that, you would just type if next team is not null. So we will only pass it on to the next team when there is actually another team to pass it on to. So if we go back to our um, issuer class, um, this is what we wanted to um, go towards. So let's see if we made it work. So we'll be running this code. And as you can see, we still have the same behavior. So we still get these lines printed. So that shows us that we implemented it correctly. So the application team and the database team can still connect to the database. The application and the networking team, um, sorry, the application and the database team still handle the issue of connecting to the database. The application team and networking team handle the internet connection issue, and the application team handles the application error. So that is how you implement the chain of responsibility. And as you can see, we only need to call handle issue once now for each type of uh, issue. We can also um, very easily add or remove teams from this. So I will remove the database team to show this. So if I want to remove a team, I just get rid of um, one add next in this global issue handler. So now we only have two teams, the application team and the networking team. And if I run this code again, then you can see that now there no longer is a database team. So we still have this unable to connect to the database issue, but it only goes to the application team and no longer to the database team since we've removed the database team from here. So as you can see, we can also very easily um, add or remove teams from this list without having to change any of the issue handling code over here. All right, so that's how you implement the chain of responsibility design pattern. Um, so hopefully this was useful and I'll see you in the next lab video.